Hi everyone, uh, today I wanted to do another forest painting but this time I wanted to try something different. I really enjoy doing my forest paintings where the foreground gets foggier. Uh, wait, that didn't make sense. <laughs> um, the way the background gets foggier, you know, the further back it was and the foreground gets to be the most vibrant colour. Only this time I used pink ink. Yeah. Uh, that extra hand there is my housemate helping me see the water that I missed. But yeah, I start a layer with water to help it spread. But I'll be honest, this is the first time I've really used ink uh, for an entire painting. Um, so I am treating it with the way I would for watercolors. Um, but it definitely is more vibrant and what I liked about it was once it dried it stayed on the page so when I did the next layer the water didn't pick it up and move it around again which is a problem I do have with watercolours although maybe it dries a bit too fast for me because I did notice that there are streaks from the brush strokes that I didn't blend quick enough before it had already dried like that. I'm okay with it though, I like it. I like to see where the brush strokes are. Um, but maybe it is something I can work on if I do this again to make the sky seem more smooth and blended. So I'm starting with my first layer of trees. I have a mixture of ink and water in my palette there so I can decide if I want the colours to come out stronger or not. Uh, the more ink I use, the stronger the colour is and that kind of tricks the eye into thinking that those, those trees are more in the foreground. And if I want them to seem further in the distance, I'll use more water in the mixture so that the colour isn't as strong. Uh, since this is the first layer of trees, they are going to be the furthest back. And really, it's just making sure that they all stay aligned whilst looking not like a copy and paste. So now this layer has dried and I did notice that the trees kind of stand out from the layer that they were supposed to be a part of. So that is something I try to work on more with this next layer. I go in again with a layer of water first just to help the ink spread evenly and I'm not actually trying to keep the colour consistent all the way down because I know the bottom of the page will be covered by the final layers um, so it doesn't really matter that much if the colour fades it will get covered eventually so for this layer I am using a mixture of ink and water that has a stronger uh, <laughs> it has it has more ink uh, to water this time so that the colour becomes stronger uh, and just makes it seem like it's further in the foreground, uh, less foggy. And I am using my watercolour brushes with this piece, the same as I have done with the other forest paintings that I've done before. And here I am adding water to the bottom of the trees. I'm just trying to 
lend the colour uh, more into the layer to avoid what we have with the first layer. Although I am okay with how it turned out because I think it kind of resembles the trees growing from a mountain's ridge. But I do want it to seem more blended the further they come into the foreground so that it looks less disjointed. I was a little surprised when I used this ink because I actually bought a small bottle that was labelled plum purple. Um, it like had a small painting of a plum and everything on the front and it was a very rich like deep dark purple and this clearly isn't. It's more of a magenta sort of pink. I'm okay with it. I was just surprised and at first I thought Maybe it's because I used water to make the colour softer at first, but as we continue with the painting you'll see I'll add more layers and by the end I'm only using ink without a mix of water at all. And yeah, it just doesn't become any more purple. Uh, so, I don't know, it was a little sad because I did want to do other paintings with this ink. I had plans for but um we'll think of other things but yeah you see i'm just dipping my brush straight into the ink pot now to get the strongest color and it's just pink uh it is it's not the dark purple it said it was um so yeah i'll uh, maybe have to look for other ink colors maybe i'll try a different make i'm not sure but i like the pink it's just not what I planned <laughs> to have. Um, for the final layer, I wanted to do something different with my other forest paintings. It has just been strictly horizontal uh, layers, like stepping down on the page, coming closer, but it's a forest. Uh, so I wanted to do the final layers. As, as if we're being closer to the cliff sides, as if we can see more detail of like the rocky edges. You can see me just, you can see in the corner I'm scrolling through YouTube on my iPad. I do watch a lot of podcasts while <laughs> I'm painting. Um, but yeah, so here I am just trying to get the rest of the ink that's still wet to spread more on keep the colour consistent um, and I thought I might add fewer trees if it was like a rocky cliff face I didn't want it to be as busy as the forest in the background and I also tried my best to add more detail to the trees um, it's hard to see here but you know you wanted to, I wanted to add more um, tree branches, leaves, little flicks of the brush to make out that you can see more detail because they are closer. And I'm adding my final cliff edge in here, again just dipping the brush straight into the bottle and I'm using the edge of the brush to make it more, more rocky, less smooth. I have a flat edged brush for this and I'm tilting the pad because since it's the end of the painting the paper is warping a bit i am using a watercolor pad with uh, the glued edges to keep the paper flat but it only does so much and the middle of it is raising slightly from the moisture so the ink is starting to collect at the bottom so every time you see me tip the pad slightly i'm just trying to push it more towards the cliff edges and the trees just get a more spread out colour uh, with the ink instead of it collecting and being really dark at the bottom.
And here I am trying to blend out that cliff edge that had sort of been created from the ink drying so quickly and like me not blending it fast enough with the water. And I use my little plastic palette knife to separate the page from the block. Um, the ink did spread onto the next page a little so I'll have to do something pink again to make that less noticeable on my next painting. But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once I save up for a printer and scanner I do plan on selling prints of this on InPrint. If you'd like to help me afford the printer I do have a Ko-Fi, the link will be in the description. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me on this video. Um, I'll have another one coming out soon. But for now, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and have a nice day. Thanks guys. Love you. Bye.